coming up here. So Alan has 15 years of experience in solutions management and commercial software delivery within the oil and gas industry. Prior to being with Energy IQ, Alan was Chief Operating Officer of Paragon Solutions, uh, where he was responsible for professional and service product delivery. In fact, I benefit from his wisdom. Uh, Alan is, uh, holds a bachelor's degree in business admin with a major in management information systems and a minor in computer science from Baylor University. And he's currently an executive MBA candidate at Rice's Jones Graduate School of Business. Hey, well, I learn how to say that. <laughs> Mark Rich is, uh, with, as I say, with Apache. Uh, he's the manager of business intelligence at Apache, overseeing the data warehouse that includes data from more than a dozen source systems, a BI front end solution that delivers data, and visualization to end users. He also, they've implemented the Wellmaster implementation under the TDM application, and Mark brings 16 years of experience in designing and implementing similar solutions for mid size upstream oil and gas clients. So I want to welcome them here. Take it away. Thank you and good morning. And uh, thank you to the PPDM organization for having us here today. I have to say I'm a little remiss there was no broom ball this year. I was looking forward to getting to some, some revenge. Uh, so why are we here today? Mark and I are here today to talk about a case study on a project that we're wrapping up at Apache. We want to give you some insights to what we've been doing some of the objectives of the project, some of the lessons learned, the challenges we faced, and then some of the benefits that have come about as the efforts over the, the last few months. So our day today is we're going to talk about that. So our famous inspiration for code cracking was Ralphie from A Christmas Story. Uh, hopefully you recognize that character given that it's holiday season, we figured it would be appropriate. So what started this initiative? It really came from a single question, a simple question from Apache's executive team, which is, what is the status of Apache's operated and shared interest wells? And they really had no good way of assessing that answer across their disparate systems in the organization. And they had built a small in-house solution to attempt to solve that, but it really wasn't scaling, it really wasn't giving the answers they were looking for. And so when we started looking at what we should be doing, we said, okay, well, status is one attribute we care about, but can we go bigger than that? Can we look at the entire well in terms of Apache's operational expertise and say, what is ultimately the most important thing? So it was really about assessing those attributes to see how we can simply manage those throughout the organization and really get to that well mastered. And we ended up with about 44 attributes that we cared about from Apache's perspective. But it was also about providing a simple solution, especially in times like these where there aren't a lot of resources to help manage a system like this. Automation became key. It was an absolute requirement for this uh, solution and that this becomes something that can be managed almost by itself uh, and, and very easy and cost effective. Additionally, what we wanted to get to at the end are, are basically our successful criteria had we exited the project and achieved all of our goals is that we have a well master system that can support a golden well record across the multiple levels of well hierarchy. In this case, we're focusing on well, borehole, and completion that's simply managed and easy to use that can answer the executive's question of what is our status? Because that's a quite challenging question to answer given all the different statuses and different domains of the application. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. So what was the challenge? So the project components of this were eight disparate systems. Most of these were in-house, IHS was the external third-party vendor data, and we had to write solutions that would bring data in, the well header data in from these uh, systems via an ETL process into a PPDM solution. And there's a few challenges involved in that that we'll talk about here in a few minutes. But the first was, how do we stage the data? Each one of these systems is looking at the data a little bit differently, and so we wanted to create a normalized structure, a denormalized structure rather, that allow us to land that data into a consistent area so that every system that's ETLing your data in has a consistent look and feel. And then from there, we start to take it from the staging tables into the PPDM 3H structure where we start to apply things like data standardization, rules, quality management, unit conversion, coordinate reference system conversion. So that we're always looking at the same data because each disparate source had different metrics and different uh, coordinate systems for that data. So as a the results of doing that, we now end up with multiple well version records from multiple disparate systems that allow us to uniquely identify one well across all these systems, which is one of the, the main goals of this project. It's what Apache is calling their Apache ID. Uh, to the point where they're actually very anxious to start getting this into the field to start programming their meters for their producing units. So once we have that common ID, we could then start looking forward, post this solution, and Mark will talk a little bit about this here in a minute, 
and to taking that data, the golden record, back to those disparate systems, and we have this nice little cycle of where we're constantly getting the most fresh data in to the well master system and then be able to propagate it back out so people are making the key decisions in the right places. So this project was broken up into three phases. The first was a proof of concept and discovery phase. In this phase, we chose 11 wells from each of the systems that had consistent data throughout because we really wanted to validate that we could extract the data, transform it uniformly, and get it into the system. We also just spent a lot of time with Apache unearthing what are those attributes that you ultimately care about? What is your definition of a gold record? What sources do you care about and which ones have the highest priority? And so we unearthed that in about a three month initiative, did a lot of work. Uh, it wasn't a full time initiative, so it was a little bit here and there, but it took about three months. Phase one was the interesting one. Every project has a problem child, and this one was ours. So we're halfway through phase one, which is the production implementation of the proof of concept. We're focusing on a particular region, and then a mass reorg of the regions. So everything was redefined. What we were calling one region was now a super region. So we, we stopped for a minute and said, what is the most stable region we can focus on? And it was actually something that we had planned for a later phase in the project, so we switched to Permian. At this time, we also realized that Permian was one of the first regions to move off of open wells into Wellview, so we had to go out and then uh, take on Wellview and, and pull that ETL process forward. Uh, and then also productionize the POC. So that was kind of fun. It, straight, it lengthened the, that particular phase out by about a month and a half, so it took us about four and a half months to finish that. But the work that we had done in the central region was actually quite helpful because we could resume it in phase two, where we picked up some of the other regions that they cared about, specifically what they call central region, which is basically onshore, uh, the Delaware Basin and the Gulf Coast region. We also looked at adding a third, uh, I should say, eighth source called Geoprog, which is an in-house application that they're building to help manage their, some of their uh, lifecycle elements. And one of the most important things we added in phase two is change data capture. So that allows us to look at these source systems and make a determination of what data has actually changed. So that when we pull data in from these systems, we're only pulling that data. So outcomes, how do we do this? There are some really unique challenges when you're talking about pulling wells from all the different uh, stages of the life cycle. The most earliest stage for Apache's perspective is just a conceptual well. They have an in-house application called Geoportal where they can literally drop a point on a map and say, we're gonna drill there. And at this point, it hasn't been permitted. It doesn't have a government ID. All it has is a name and a surface location. Well, that's great when you create your first well of origin record, but what happens when you start flowing in your additional data that does have a government ID? And so you're trying to match a government ID against a null value, so what do you do? Well, we came up with two things that I wanna to talk to you about today. The first is Jaro Winkler string matching. Has anybody ever heard of that? Yeah, it's a really complicated name. Uh, if you're an imperfect typist like me, and whenever you go do a Google search, and it politely reminds you that the word you meant to type is actually this, that's what that does. It looks at strings and says, let me give you the best match of what I think you're looking for based upon the characters that are present. Well, this is really helpful in getting us part of the way there. So in this particular situation, we can match pretty closely, but as you can see here, there's a couple of names that match what we're ultimately looking for. They're both off by a character, but because of that, they still give us a 97% accurate match and anything over 90 was relevant to us, but we had to take it one step further. There was one other piece of information we had available to us, and that was the surface location. So we implemented a system that allowed us to do both well name matching with a 90% degree credibility or higher, plus a surface location match threshold of .0005. And that gave us a pretty accurate situation to be able to match most wells to their original conceptual well, and allowed us to keep all the well version records in the same hierarchy family. So from there, it became a question of quality. Each of these systems had different attribute level uh, information. They had different representations of the data. Status is one of the biggest one. I think we mapped over 100 different statuses down to 17. Uh, been able to handle those catch-alls where the data is free form in the source application versus a drop-down, or when it's highly configurable, they can configure their own statuses as they want. Wellview is a really good example of that. There were quite a few statuses we had to map. And so being able to look at that quality and run it through a rules engine became a real challenge because what we found was originally we were catching more data than we were actually pushing forward. So as we expanded our rules, extended our cross-referencing, we were able to land the data more efficiently. And then I think toward our last test and second phase, we had 140,000 records and only 40 failed because of data quality issues. So that's a pretty powerful metric. So now that we have all the data in, PPDM, we have well version records, we have our well node version records, we have our legal location, our well area, well alias information. How do we start building that golden record? Well, it starts with blending. So at the lowest level that we captured here at Apache was the completion record. So we take all the different versions using a sort priority list and roll that up to a master gold record for that particular level. Then 
We do the same thing for the wellbore. Then we aggregate from the completion record those attributes that have been designated as also belonging to the wellbore that were interesting at the wellbore level. Then we do the exact same thing for the well level, and finally we aggregate once more. And now we have our three golden records across the entire well level hierarchy, which is really important for moving data throughout and having that unique well ID situation. So, lessons learned. The first is, it's as easy in terms of testing as looking what's on the left as looking what's on the right. Based upon the expertise in this room, you know that's not true. For us, there was no mystery here. But the problem here is we were actually working with the business to help us do the user acceptance testing. We wanted them to validate the data, and they don't have the same depth of expertise in data management. So when you suddenly say we're taking data from one system, flattening it to a staging table system, then mapping it out to a bunch of target systems, what they see is this. So we really had to help coach them through the UAT process to understand that a data value on the left might look different on the right because it's gone through transformation, cleanup, cross-reference, coordinate reference, reference transformation, unit conversion. So helping them understand that process was pivotal to a successful user acceptance testing process. So that was a lesson we learned really early on was don't take advantage of the knowledge you have as a data management professional and work with your business. And at the end we got a gold record which was also confusing. So you're looking at a golden record, it doesn't have some of the attributes you would expect to see from the source system you're evaluating. So the other challenge we faced was when you're looking at systems that basically take a well through its various different stages of the life cycle, there are various different levels that you're working with. In some systems, it might be a well, like the earliest conceptual. It was just a name and a surface location. It was a well origin. And as we moved all the way down to Aries and Avocet, we got into production level data, which was at the completion level. So when we were mapping this data through the system, we had to make sure we were landing data at the right levels. And then sometimes we would overlook something and realize we mapped a one to many to a one to one and we'd have to go back and retest and find a way to propagate that out. I'm speeding up here because I'm running out of time. So some lessons learned. Uh, the first is data rules are absolutely important to this process. If you're landing data in a staging system for multiple disparate systems, you have to have a gatekeeper. And these rules have to be flexible. Now, leveraging the PPDM solution, we're actually able to leverage all the rules that were built by the PPDM organization, so that proved quite successful. We wrote some others that were contextually sensitive to the situation, and they got us some really successful outcomes. Once you have the data, you simply have to go through the process of determining what attribute is most important from which source system. If I have two different operators, what system should take precedent when there's a conflict? So going through that process was pivotal in the early beginning and applying it and allowing the, the blended record and the aggregated record to take advantage of that source priority preference was really important. And finally, these systems don't make sense without governance. If you don't have governance, then these systems get out of date, they don't stay refreshed, and you actually lose this process and the value of data goes down quite a bit. And so with that, I'm gonna let Mark close the loop and walk you through the benefits of the solution. All right, so before I hit this next button and show this last arrow, this all started, like Alan said, with the corporate reservoir guy saying, hey, I spend all this time gathering data from this system, this one, this one, putting it all together so I can get a good picture of the wells that I've got to go and report on. Help me out, IT. So we helped him out. We wrote a little something, and he said, yeah, that's the kind of thing I want. And we said, well, yeah, but it's missing a lot of stuff. So we went and looked for a product that, that had a bunch of that stuff baked into it. And here we were. But even when we put it together, when we put it in place, he can't be the guy that, that works on maintaining it and improving it and marketing it. He, he can do some of it, but if he tries to do all of it, he's not going to do any of it well. IT, IT might be able to do some of it, but you know, hey, we can't, we can improve it, we can maintain it, but marketing, we, we just, sometimes we don't have the juice, sometimes we don't know the business that well. Even our CRE guy, this, this lead on it, he can't market to every group in the company. So what do we do to, to close that loop? And that is, uh, we gotta come up with a governance team. I would even propose two, a strategic and a tactical. Is the tactical's a little bit closer to the point of the spear. IT is the point of the spear. They're in our, in our theme, you know, they're Ralphie with the decoder, right? They know how to decode that data. They know how to get data from the systems, and they know how to put it in, what the structures are. But they are just, they need to focus on that. That's the best thing they can do. This tactical governance team, 
they can be in touch with that. They can they can get updates every other week that, that they can decide on some of these data rules, source priorities, and then they push that up to that, that strategic governance group that says, you know, hey, I know that we've got these new systems that, that we're evaluating. We've got to make some decisions there with the knowledge of, of this data. And there's industry um, activity going on that maybe we're going into a new state and there's regulatory stuff there that, that we just need to take this well master into account. So that governance team uh, teams are, are very, very important in selecting the plan there. Uh, so that finishes our outcomes. You know, we, we did well matching. Um, we did these very complex testing scenarios. Uh, and, and then we put the rules and aggregation and branding in place. Uh, so benefits. We had expected and unexpected benefits. And, and I'll say, you know, the easy one is we had a golden well that, that we ended up with uh, that, that combined the best data that we could find across all of our internal and external systems. And we could do that blending by attribute, by source system. Very, very valuable for us. The other thing, um, as, as Alan talked about, is we've got this common identifier now that, that we can, through all the well versions from all these source systems, we can see everything that happened for that particular object, that well object, across its life cycle. Uh, life cycle. So, uh, a very good benefit for us. And actually, that is where this whole thing started. Is that that CRE guy wanted to put this common I well identifier, this key, Apache key on every record that was the same thing. So, so we knew we were gonna get that and we got just that. So another expected benefit, of course, is analytics. You know, whether it's a GIS location-based thing, or now you're not seeing spots on the map off the west coast of Africa. Or it's a BI tool that's got a pie chart with a huge slice that's labeled empty. Or you've got self-service where we and the Wellmaster have taken the 150 different statuses from all of our eight systems and boiled them down to 17, mapped them to these 17 standard statuses. Well, if somebody's using a self-service tool and they go and they find those 150 and they, they happen to come up with 10, maybe 20 different standard statuses, maybe they get lucky and go 17 and it's the exact 17, but they put them in different groups. So now we've got bad uh, analytics, but with this solution, we've got much better analytics than something we, we expected. Unexpected. Uh, I can't say enough about this. All of the, the auditing, all of the logging that we get from the aggregation and the blending, um, all of that stuff is just great ammunition for these governance teams to say, hey, we, we know we've got this situation. We, we know this data is a high preference item, but we're missing it in so many cases. We're, we're not getting it. Maybe it's valid in a certain status, maybe it's not in another status. That, all of that auditing gives them great, great ammunition to, to see this process over its life cycle. Another is we're doing all these quality tests all in one place. So all this data quality should be able to provide that same governance group the ability to say how many failures to these data quality tests are we getting and if we propose a program for this source system to improve its data capture, improve its quality, and then we don't see that failure rate go down, or we don't see the population of this value go up over time, we know something's not working right, so these, these quality tests were fantastic to have. And then just getting all these things together, and actually the process of the data discovery, and at the same time the process of the PPDM, what is a well, and knowing that we've got a well-defined target, we've got to look at these source systems and say, hey, you, we've got to get from that system something that fits here, it's got to fit right. So that 
and itself gave us a much better picture of, of all of our sources. So the next steps, we're gonna add more regions, uh, Canada International, we are gonna add more, more and better data as we find it, so whether it's the governance teams or, or knowledge that we already have within the company of better sources of data. Somebody out in Permian four years ago bought a data set it's a really good data set, but it's stuck out there somewhere. We ought to be able to get that in. And even if it, even if it, it needs to live in one of those source systems, we can bring it in, set it next to the data that we have, and just compare it and say, how often is it better than the data we have, or how often is it different? And in that test scenario where it is different, how often is it more correct? And then we can move it up in preference as it becomes more and more correct. So another thing is bi-directional. Now, now that we have this UWI, we need to push it back out to these systems. So it's, it's important for us to start that work. Um, and then we're gonna look at the, the other domains in the PPDM model and find out what, now that we've got these wells associated with each other, the right things, then we can look at how valuable it would be to get other data sources in and fill them up. And so, that, that completes our benefits. You know, as a summary, we did the, the Golden Well and the, the UWI, and we, we get better analytics that leads to better decision making, and um, that auditing and quality goals are just going to help us tremendously in making this better and better over time. So, to go back to our theme, Ralphie got a message. He had the decoder. Now, you guys know we're here at the end of our agenda and we're close to lunch, so that would lead us to this. Thank you, brother.